Good afternoon, Valentine's Day. Uh, we welcome and we'll call the meeting. The commission is made up of volunteers with expertise <clears throat> in interest in historic preservation and design. We generally meet on the second Thursday of the month. This is how I start to talk. <laughs> <coughs> we we meet on this <coughs> oh, curse on me on the second Thursday of the month to review cases. Staff to the commission is our urban design and historic preservation staff. They are available to answer questions if you have them, but please do not interrupt proceedings if you do indeed need to speak with one of them. The meeting generally proceeds with the staff calling the case and describing it. I will call for the applicant to come forward afterward to add to the basic description of the request if necessary, or if the applicant wishes to do so. If so, the applicant should keep the presentation to 10 minutes or less. The commissioners will then have the opportunity to ask questions. And at this point, I would ask if there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the proposal. The audience comment shall be kept at two minutes per person. If there is, the applicant will have the opportunity to respond. This rebuttal shall not exceed five minutes. In most of the cases, we will make a decision tonight after all the information has been presented. If your case is denied or you feel that our decision was made in error, you and anyone with standing have the opportunity to appeal within 30 days of the decision. If you plan to speak about the Pacific Project, you must have signed in. The sheet is over on that green table. Also, also and so that the members of the public understand the commissioners are under strict instruction to avoid discussing DDRC meetings and applications with members of the public or with each other outside of these proceedings to avoid ex parte communication. Um, do we have a roll call? We do indeed. Mr. Cohn? Present. Ms. Moore? Present. Ms. Fuller Will? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. We have quorum. Is the agenda order still stands? Uh, the agenda order does still stand. All right. The DDRC utilized a consent agenda for those projects which require DDRC review, but which meets the guidelines and typically require no discussion. If anyone wishes to discuss an item on the consent agenda, I will ask for it that you speak up with the consent agenda uh, is read, and we can pull the item for discussion on the regular agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to take an item off the consent agenda for a discussion? Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda and meeting minutes. I will um, just read these out and list them for y'all so you know what's on the consent agenda. <clears throat> The first item on the consent agenda is 2009 Lincoln Street, which is a request for preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill. This is a building listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And our second item, ah, that's our only item, and then the approval of the minutes. Okay. Uh, the approval of the minutes for January? Mm -hmm. That's correct. A motion to approve both the minutes as well as the consent agenda. Uh, how, can we have a vote? <coughs> Second. I'm in favor. I'm okay. Our 
Yeah, January meeting. All in favor. All in favor. Yes. 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 <coughs> Motion passes. <coughs> All right, the presentation of the cases on the regular agenda. Okay, the first case tonight is um, 700 Harden Street. This is a request for a certificate of design approval for exterior changes to an approved design, which is an appeal to a staff decision in the Five Points Urban Design District. You can see on the screen, this is the location of the project. Um, So this project, the renovation of the former Harper's Restaurant building, was approved by this commission in September of last year. The applicant has since requested a, a number of changes to the design, most of which have been reviewed and approved by staff. The approved design for renovation including, included removing the membrane barrel canopies over both the entrance and the dining patio, and replacing them with standing seam shed type roof structures to tie into with the existing standing seam roof. The request before you today is to change the proposed material on the replacement roofs to a different material than what was originally proposed. The relevant sections of the, of the evaluation from September um, are included in your packets. So the massing of the building is not changing. Um, the barrel awning at the entrance and the arched roof over the patio are being replaced with simple standing seam roofs, which are consistent with the building and with the district. The new proposed roofs are still the same overall as overall form as the September DDRC approved design. However, they would like to use a different type of metal than standing seam. The proposed material is the master rib panel shown <clears throat> on the cut sheet and here. Um, while there are a number of metal roofs in the, D in the district, the DDRC approvals on file specified standing seam metal as it has a sturdier commercial grade appearance for an urban building. Um, <clears throat> one of the other um, guidelines is reinforce the positive urban form and unique features of the district. Um, the outdoor eating area is being preserved as a screen porch dining area. The new canopies, um, or sorry, the, the proposal before was that they were standing seam, and then the new, the new proposal, let's see, sorry, let me go to the next guideline. Design a well-proportioned unified building. Compose the massing and organize the interior and exterior spaces to create a well-proportioned building that exhibits a coherent architectural concept. Design the architectural elements and finish details to create a unified building so that all components appear integral to the whole. When designing architectural details, consider how the following can contribute to create a building that exhibits a coherent architectural concept. Exterior finished materials, architectural lighting and signage, shadow patterns. Um, so the existing building has a patinaed copper standing seam roof along the southeast side, and you can see that on the upper two pictures here. Um, while matching this exactly would be cost prohibitive due to it being copper, using standing seam material on the new proposed roof over the entrance and the patio would be consistent with the existing building detailing and create a coherent architectural concept. The newly proposed material has a different profile and will have visible fasteners making this a departure from the existing roof detailing. And so at the, the top is the drawing of the proposed um, renovations to the building, the roof, the large roof over the porch to the left, and the small shed roof over the entrance are the new roof materials. And then the one to the right um, is the existing standing seam copper that is sort of along um, Santee in the side of the parking lot. <clears throat> and then there's some, um, this is the applicant had provided some pictures of some other um, metal roofs in the Five Points area. And um, like I said, a lot of most of these actually were written. The approvals were written for standing seam. So whether what, how those didn't get installed properly, we'd have to look into each one of those cases. But I can't say none of these buildings have an existing metal roof that's different from you know. There's not different types of metal on each of these. So, but I think that's that's it for um, the staff presentation. The applicants are here, and they brought a sample of the roof. So Rachel DeBacher and Gretchen are here from QLR. Do I need to screw it in or anything? I think so. Did we not? I guess we didn't square in our speakers. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, have you signed in? I, I did sign in, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, 
I want you to uh, take an oath sure. to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Let it go. Let it rip. Thank you, Lucinda. Thank you for having us uh, here today to present. We have a large sample. In, in fact, this is the smallest they would cut it at the <laughs> roofing place for us. Um, so please don't cut yourself. Um, so we, uh, our clients are requesting this metal roof change. Um, our clients are Home Team Barbecue. They have uh, three other restaurants in South Carolina, mostly in the Charleston area. Um, they've used this type of roof in their other restaurants. Um, they haven't actually used the sanding seam metal roof um, in the other ones, and um, they feel that this is part of their identity branding, um, this particular profile. Um, furthermore, as you stated, um, we submitted um, several adjacent businesses um, in the Five Points neighborhood, and in fact, the horseshoe right next to this site um, has, has this um, called the Master Rib uh, metal roof um, also. The Thirsty Parrot, uh, Polly's Front Porch, uh, Pure Bar even, all of those are within a couple blocks of, of our site and they're all using um, metal roof just like this. Um, so we, we feel like we are maintaining a community character by sticking with this type of roof um, and where we do feel like we're being consistent with the neighborhood. Um, and to your point of um, being consistent with the existing roof, um, we feel this, we can have a small change to this type of roof because the existing copper standing seam roof is over an interior portion of the restaurant um, and we are keeping that, we do like that patina look. Um, this newer roof is over all exterior portions of the building, the front porch area and the um, front entrance. Um, so we feel like, you know, that makes sense for the building for between old and new. Um, and then finally, um, the height disparity of the ground level and then the bottom edge of both of those roofs. Um, both of those, the new roofs, the bottom edge is at like 10 foot 10. So it's really would be difficult to see it um, from the ground level to see um, any sort of exposed fasteners or really kind of make out the differences in the program. Can you come over here and tell us where on the picture, please? Uh, yeah. So. Um, this is existing standing seam copper roof on, on what was Har Harbors. I'm sorry, um, you said it was an interior? It's over an interior space is what I uh, mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Condition. Um, this front canopy and this porch, those are the new roofs and those are what we're requesting. Not that color, that was just the sample color that the right, roofing place had. Okay. You may um, remember that those were the, it was the barrel kind of green like awning. plasticky awning at the front. And then it was a green like canvas or plastic awning at the front entrance with kind yeah. of like a, a, a barrel shape to it also. Mm -hmm. how, how different in color would the, the existing roof and, and this new roof be? The owners haven't decided on a color yet, mostly because they're waiting to hear if this um, profile will be allowed. Um, but it would likely be this kind of burnished bronze color similar. We're not trying to match the existing, but we're not doing a complete departure in the color department either. Are you planning to remove all the copper that's there? No, no, no. no. That, that is staying. <laughs> yes. That is staying. This is new roof and this is new roof, like completely new. So what we took out was the, the uh, for lack of a better word, vinyl, I'm going to call it the vinyl awnings that were there before we took those down because we thought that it branded it too much to Harper's and wasn't consistent with kind of the quality that this client was looking for. So we wanted to come back with that. So the installation of this type roof is different than the installation of the standing seam roof, Correct. which is why you see fasteners versus Mm -hmm. The standing seam is, is panels that are crimped together mm -hmm. along the edge. It's a little bit more labor intensive. And you'll see the fasteners on that. Um, the fasteners would be there. Actually, I think um, it would be Lucinda hard to see really them. Good standing oh, yeah, around. sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, she gave out a really good. This, this you got after packets were delivered. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can how I think you can see from one of them. Right. Um, so at, at a regularly 
you know, measured out distance, you'll, you'll have a nice yeah, orderly line provide. of fasteners. Mm -hmm. And they're color matched to the color roof. Matched to the roof. Is there only one row of them? Um, they're on the small awning, you would like probably have it at the feet. top and the bottom. Yeah. In the larger one, yeah. it just depends on the length of this, whether it be one or two. They have to do it for uplift and everything like that. Do you know what the, um, sir, the diameter of the rivets is? That's an excellent question. Usually like a half inch. Yeah, I, half inch, half inch, okay. three quarters, and three quarters of an inch. They're not, they're not quarter size. They're mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, equal size. So then, do you mind holding it this way because part of well, I just want to see the edge because I think part of it is that the profile is different. So yeah. instead of so, what you'll see is this becomes our raised edge rather than um, something that looks more like... Interlocked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you go back? Can mm -hmm. you flip to the images of, like, uh, Pure Bar and... Oh. Um, oh, that one's not showing up on here. So those It's in their packet, and I guess, I don't know if... Um, sorry, I just didn't put... That's okay. They're where those approved the standing seam, and they just put them up? Yeah. They were, yeah. Okay. Over the course of years, and again, I can't... I'd have to... I did go check on all the, I think one approval did not See, specify, but all the other ones I think had. The one There's the a, a leading edge. Crept up on a weekend. Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, pure bar time. here. Is that right? I think they yeah. have a gutter situation and there's pine straw or something in the gutter. Um, we would also, if you flip back to the porch, there'll actually be a gutter all along here. You're not gonna see the edge of the profile um, on, on this one. There won't be a gutter on this one. I guess, um, aside from just the challenge with the guidelines, my overall kind of hang up on all that is when you don't have a gutter or don't have a way to hide the edge, mm -hmm. it definitely looks like a much cheaper panel than the standing mm -hmm. seam finish. I don't know if there's a way to yeah. conceal that. Yeah. When you see that edge, it just, mm -hmm. you know. Right. I mean, on, on this long edge, there will be a gutter. On right. this smaller canopy, we have not planned for a gutter. Is there a, um, how much of a cost difference in the material is there? Good question. Large. Large. Like uh, what? On this project, <laughs> I think they said $20,000 difference between the two. It's about three times as much per square. It's more like they intensive. They're, um, they wanted the corrugated. Mm. So their their branding is this master rib and the corrugated, and they wanted the corrugated. We're like, I don't think we're gonna go with the corrugated. Here. This is more appropriate for this setting. So. so, I'm just where it says home team. There is the parking lot here. So if you're looking, you're seeing um, two different roofs. So, yeah, that's a that's a good way to see. Like so from here, I guess. So, so where the awning is, the roof here that's is the standing seam. This, this is the standing seam here. Sorry, this yep. long one here. Long mm -hmm. T. Right. Okay. And then this is being removed and replaced with the little shed over the mm -hmm. entrance, and then this is removed and being replaced with the new. So will that abut the no. standing seam? No. Okay. No. No, the, um, the front canopy and that side where the copper exists will not actually touch each other. When I say the front canopy, right over the, the door, the small yeah. shed room. There's a corner here. And okay. there is visually a tree between the two mm. um, that is existing that will remain. Um, which visually breaks that up too. Do you have a color, the color slide of the um, master rib color chart? I don't think the whole cut sheet is in here. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's where so which one? We're right? asking, we're asking them to, strong, we're strongly advising them to consider First, this right. one because it's, you which know, one? pretty which close. One? Uh, the dark, the but, bronze. You know, they have not made a final decision yet. 
Well, show me a detail of what Harris brought up about that Eve. How's that terminated? Your proposal. How's your I think they terminated? do have a metal piece that could be crimped onto the edge to terminate it for that for this short um, piece. And then here Could they put a gutter on it? Do, do not they, on the front one. Would they be opposed to that? Well then you have to bring it down about, somewhere. Yeah, my my question with that, I, I get I see where you're going with that. It's just with having <coughs> then a downspout, a down leader that has to get back to the face of the building and go down, would that look more unsightly than just having right, kind of a simple it's, it's form gonna have of to that. be taken out somewhere where it's not dumping onto people who are standing nearby. So my question is that and I don't, uh, so I'm going to phrase it sort of simply and maybe it's a more complicated question. When they came in front of everybody to get approval, the cost hadn't changed between this building material and the standing seam, has it? I mean, has there been a big price jump at the point that it was approved originally? They knew. We they were at that point, we did not have a contractor on board. We didn't have. Uh, full cost estimates at that point, nor were we fully through design with them. So yeah. But standing seam was approved, and y'all already know what the usual cost of standing seam is. So you're saying, like, overall cost did the overall cost change? In order yeah, to I'm just saying at the point at the point that it was originally approved with the standing seam roof, wouldn't the cost gap have sort of been? Com the same. I mean, standing seam roofs haven't gone up a whole lot since the original design was approved, or have they? Yeah, I mean, and I guess they're not, I mean, you, you didn't bring up that the cost was a factor in the decision. It's more of a branding. Can I clarify? Are we, are we talk discussing this because we approved it differently? Yeah. I is, guess. That, is that the only? We approved the Well, because the guidelines, seam, you know, guidelines. I mean, the staff, I guess, determination was that this wasn't consistent with the guidelines right. and what was approved in September was and so and it okay. was actually yeah it was on the consent agenda so there was not a presentation it wasn't allowed to okay there that's were what, no that's kind what of I outstanding <coughs> issues right okay any other questions yeah Harris. <laughs> yeah I'm sorry so I think the other challenge I have is that and we're not tasked with picking colors but there's definitely colors when you get into this that would look like the more colorful that becomes, the cheaper it looks. Whereas standing it, seam. Yeah, I, I don't think it will be colorful. Yeah, we and, and I appreciate you know you guys aren't involved with color, but I agree with you a thousand percent, and that's why we are pushing them in a certain direction. The brick's going to be kind of like a pickled light gray or white. The existing patina on the copper, you know what that looks like. So we don't want to be cheesy and try to make a fake patina copper look. So we're really pushing them towards kind of a neutral, darker metal so that it blends with everything else. There's the storefront windows along the edge, the existing. Uh, just There's some darker colors involved with this. So we're trying to provide, provide a little bit of a contrast between the massing of the building, what the brick's going to be, versus everything else. So we are, we can't sit here and say that the owner wouldn't go with the hunter green, but we are very strongly recommending that, that they well, stay with a neutral. Yeah. And my, so my other struggle is this is I drive through Five Points and I see those canopies and they make me cringe that are on there, which is why I was asking if they were actually approved. Oh. The, you mean the ones that in Five Points that are yeah. on the slide? Right. Like right. all the money was put into the street improvements and then people just kind of sneak in these canopies that don't. And they conform. weren't approved. And they weren't approved. And we, I think in the spirit of trying to like, Make yeah, it nicer. And yet now they're a precedent because they're they're not a they're not a DDRC or a staff approved yeah. precedent though. Sure. And if we were to approve this one, then we would be setting a DDRC precedent. Yeah, that's yeah. my that's I would, my yeah. I definitely don't think we want to emulate mistakes that were made or right. people who did things that weren't consistent with their permits. Right. Um, I mean, I see your point that it would represent it's it, it's both things, but for us, I mean. There's not a precedent set for approving it. It's just right. a precedent that's set for installing it against the approval. Right. Yeah, that's that's my yeah. challenge too. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> In the audience, do we have anybody to support or opposition? Um, anybody want to call for a motion? I'll make the motion that um, we deny the application for um, certificate of design approval based on for what, 700 Harden Street um, based on the condition that the applicant's request does not conform with sections 1.1 and 1.4 of the five points design guidelines. guidelines. Um, any more? I think that's clear. Okay. I second. Um, call for a vote. All in favor? Or do you want to do a show? Let's do a roll. Roll. Okay. Mr. Broom? Um, yes. Mr. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Fuller Wilt? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Wynn? Yes. The motion passes. Our next item is on the historic section of the agenda. It's 2707 Preston Street. It's a request for a certificate of design approval for an addition in the Old Chandon Lower Waverly Protection Area A. Megan McNish is the staff presenting the application. So uh, this project is a request for a certificate of design approval for an addition at 2707 Preston Street. The 15 and a half by six, or 15 and a half uh, foot by 14 foot addition is located on the rear of the structure, and uh, and is inset uh, two feet from the left elevation. Due to its location, approximately 10 feet of the addition will be visible from the right of way. Staff has two concerns related to this project. One of which is the rhythm of openings. Uh, in the current proposal, just the horizontally oriented window will be visible from the right of way. However, that window does not reference those on the existing structure. This window also creates a large expanse of solid wall on the lower half of the addition that is not in keeping with the rhythm of openings on the existing structure. To address this inconsistency and meet section 4A guideline G, staff recommends replacing the horizontally oriented window with one to two windows that match the double hung windows on the existing structure in size and pane configuration. While two windows would be most appropriate, one window would be sufficient to meet the guidelines. The applicant may wish to reuse the existing window on the rear of the structure that we will be removed during the course of the building uh, of, of the building of the addition, and any windows placed on that elevation need not be visible from the interior if the applicant so chooses. Staff's other concern is the roof shape. The drawing indicates that uh, the applicants plan to use a 1.5 to 12 shed roof for the addition. Uh, while shed roofs are present in the district, their typical function is for porches, small dormers, or additions not in excess of a few feet. Uh, the roof shape coupled with a low pitch create a form that is not seen in the district and therefore is incompatible with section 4A guideline H. There have been few requests for additions that have required DDRC review in Old Shandon, Lower Waverly. Uh, however, this example uh, from the Elmwood Architectural Conservation District demonstrates a more appropriate connection between the roof form of an addition and original structure. While the example addition is larger, the same principles can be utilized on this proposal. 
The applicants have indicated that they wish to construct a single story addition and not disrupt the second story windows on the rear. Uh, while the location of these windows has not been provided to staff, um, staff has determined that the gable that a gable roof with a pitch between three three twelve and five twelve could be utilized in this location with the ridge of the roof still sitting below the band board. A three twelve gable roof could also be accommodated in a rise shorter than what is currently drawn. Uh, staff recommends using either a hip or gable roof in which the gable terminates at the rear of the structure. Uh, with a pitch between 312 and 512 to be consistent with the guidelines. Should the roof form change per staff recommendation, the material for the roof on the addition should also be altered to be consistent with the existing roof. Staff finds that the addition at 2707 Preston Street generally complies with Section 4 A and B of the Old Shandon Lower Waverly Protection Area Guidelines and recommends granting a certificate of design approval if the following conditions are met. Uh, the roof form be altered from a shed to either hip or gable roof in which the gable terminates at the rear of the addition. The roof uh, should have a pitch between 312 and 512. Shingles match those on the existing roof to be used in place of the standing seam metal. A minimum of one window matching the size and pane configuration of the double hung windows on the existing structure be used in place of the proposed horizontally oriented window. The tops of the window on the addition align with the tops of the windows on the existing structure and all details we defer to staff. Uh, is the applicant present? Yes, Would you like to step forward? Yes, I got you. <laughs> Have you signed in, sir? Did you sign in? Yes. My wife signed in. Want to take an oath? Right. To tell the truth. I tell the truth. Carry on. All right. Um, I want to thank y'all all for uh, giving me this opportunity to present my vision for the addition we want to add to 2707 Preston Street. To begin with, I must begin with my mother, who moved to an assisted living facility eight months ago. She recently told me she often thinks about going back home, but she does not think of the home she lived in for 61 years on Furman Avenue. She thinks 2707 Preston Street the house where she grew up. And in many ways, I grew up in that house too. Many Sundays we would have dinner at my grandmother's, a feast of fried chicken, green beans, rice, gravy, homemade yeast rolls, and other delectables. On special occasions in the summer, I would be uh, pressed into service to churn, churn the ice cream. And uh, it was usually peach, made with my grandmother's own homemade boiled custard, which I liked as much as the ice cream. And more than just memories, my eldest daughter is named after my great aunt who lived with my grandmother on Preston Street. And my youngest daughter was born at 2707 Preston. Her current bedroom is the same room she was born in. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is to relate one simple fact, and that is I love 2707 Preston. You brought us some beet ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Um, and my love for 2707 Preston extends to the neighborhood at large, and for that reason, I served as grant writer for the Neighborhood Association from 2002 to 2005, during which time we were awarded can-do grants, which resulted in many improvements in our little neighborhood, such as the old Sand Shandon signs and the tree plantings along Maple and Woodrow Street. Um, every time I see those trees in bloom, as they are now, I'm proud of that I'm part of getting there. Um, I was committed to and worked diligently for the historic overlay spearheaded by Pat Hubbard on the zoning of our neighborhood. It is important to note the overlay we obtained was the lightest, lightest possible sort due to the radical alterations to the neighborhood which had already taken place in the years following World War II. In the general exodus from the neighborhood, many significant houses were demolished to make room for parking lots or multifamily complexes while other homes were converted from residential to business properties or from single family to multifamily use. Not only was the light overlay of the zoning essential to sell the idea to the residents, there simply were not enough historically relevant houses left to warrant any kind of stronger protection. Of the remaining houses, 2707 Preston is not a contributing property. The reason is simple, it is architecturally boring, being nothing but a box of wood. 
The only details of interest are the stoop over the front door and the freeze band approximately 140 inches from the top of the foundation. My wife and I have long wanted to add a second bathroom. There's currently only one bathroom upstairs and a den so that the original dining room, which we're currently using as our den, can be converted back to its original use. Our design options were driven by two primary considerations. First of all, we wanted to preserve the integrity of the existing house, and secondly, to achieve a functional addition in the very limited space available for us. These two considerations have led to the design presented here today. The shed roof of the addition mirrors the shed roof of the existing rear porch. It also mirrors uh, the it also mirrors the shed roof of the addition on the house uh, by the apartments immediately to the right of uh, our house. Um, in fact, the shed roof is common to two-story box houses of that era, a fine example of which can be seen at 3005 Blossom Street, which has them on both sides of the house facing the street. In the case of 2707 in Preston, a shed roof is the only design which allows for an addition without intruding into the distinctive band around the house or the windows of the second story while retaining the continuous foundation height. A gable or a hip roof design on the addition will require either the foundation to be dropped um, or, or the, the roof uh, protrude into that, that freeze band. <coughs> and, and, but uh, achieving that functional space with a shed roof also requires a level roof since the stand is, necessitates a low slope, not allowable with shingle roof. Metal roofs are compatible with the air, certainly more than solar panels around the corner of Maple Street. If you drive down Maple Street, you can see uh, solar panels. On the left elevation of the proposed addition, there's a fixed window visible from the top right away. Our intent with this window is to both allow for natural light at the same time limit the exposure of the lights and, and cars and noise from the driveway and the HVAC components of the adjacent apartment house. Because of course, if you look out this proposed addition, what you would see is the large HVAC components of the driveway. As I'm sure y'all all know those houses in Shandon are scorching right on top of each other. Um, to conclude, I sincerely believe the design presented for your consideration best preserves the integrity of the whole house, including those not visible from the public right away, while providing a functional den, second bathroom, with minimal intrusion in the backyard, and preserving most of the existing screen porch and rear of the house. I also sincerely believe that portion of the proposed addition which is visible from the public right away is aesthetically and organically compatible with the existing structure and indeed is characteristic of many other houses of period in the surrounding neighborhood. I just want to add one more little footnote. I started with my mother. My mother worked and retired from standard, standard federal savings and loan. Standard here. building. <laughs> this may have been where her office was. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Can anybody have a question? I do have a question. So, there's a couple conditions here. Yeah. Are you are you through that saying that you would like to not? I, I would I would like to um, proceed with the addition as as, as shown. Okay. Um, we we really want to avoid putting in a, a, a full length window. Uh, as I say, just the view is is all mechanicals and there's a driveway there. Uh, those those two uh, windows, the only operating windows on the left <coughs> elevation that you see, um, which we're using as our den, we have Venetian blinds on those. They have been dropped and closed for 26 years we've lived there. And there's just nothing to look at outside that house. Um, you know, I, I feel like that 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 one window does, and and. Um, um, Early on in the, the process, Ms. McNeish was careful to point out, because originally I had an eight-foot end wall, uh, which dropped that header height with that window we had in the addition. 
and Miss McBeach uh, felt very strongly that the, the header height should line up. So I went back to our designer and um, we were able to, I mean, it dropped the slope of that roof, but with standing seam metal, we could still achieve that. So we were able to lift that one up. And, you know, standing here looking at it, I think it does uh, look, look better than the, uh, than when we had it lower height. But I do think it flows with the rest of the house. What was your reason for a shed roof? I'm, I'm curious to that as well. Yeah. And, Difficult to see, but on, on the on the drawing, the, uh, Ken has got the, the freeze band. It runs underneath the windows, directly underneath the windows on that second story. Right. Okay. And I guess what I'm struggling with is um, shed roofs typically look like something that was just stuck on when it's used as more than a porch um, right. or or an actual dormer, whereas this is a whole addition. Yeah. I think the intent of the guidelines to where it make it look more conforming, yeah. you'd still stay and under that, that band. Yeah. The, um, um, as I said, that, that freeze band is the only distinctive feature of that house other than the stoop of the front porch. It is a literally a box with that hip roof on. Um, and so, like I say, I love the house. I love the whole house. I don't want to intrude into that. If we were to put a gable on there and keep the foundation height the same, um, it'd still be it, under it, that, that. that. That roof would come in, and there's a our bedroom window. Let's see if you got a floor plan in there. I've got. Um, I'm trying to find the right one. There you go. Okay, in that floor plan. The, the cased opening leads into a little hallway, and directly above that cased opening, offset maybe a foot and a half is our bedroom window. Okay. And so and that putting that um, putting that gable or or a hook, I mean it would. The only thing a hip would do was change it on the end. You know, in any case, the ridge is going to run back into the house. And it would be, um, um, it, it, would, it would hit that. Um, it, it, would, it would eat into that area. I, I'm afraid I can't visualize it, so I, I almost would, right at this point, mm -hmm. if you um, still want to continue, you know, it, our, to argue for this plan, which um, in my mind doesn't meet the guidelines, um, I would need to see the images of what you're talking about in order to make the, a judgment on it not, you know, um, the suggestion not meeting the needs of not, you know, interrupting the... I feel like we don't have that elevation. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a picture of it on your phone? I <laughs> sent you some pictures. Mm -hmm. Uh, there should be some photos in your packet uh, that were oh, submitted. Oh, I thought you said that you didn't have um, a picture. They don't show where that, that window on the second story That's what I'm asking for. This is the... Not one of the pictures I sent you? No. It's not it's the same picture. Same. Yeah. There's a the bottom of the window. <coughs> Let me see the picture. But the, um, and it, 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 part, of, part of that consideration is... is um, the, the house... Has the, the first floor, uh, the ceilings are nine foot six. Okay, so if I have a continuous foundation height to match the ceiling heights, which I have, you know, I have no desire because I'm, I'm living in the house, I want the whole house. I have no desire to walk from a nine foot six into an addition where the ceiling drops down you know, a foot. And, and uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I put a great deal of thought into this. I, I can tell. Yeah. You know, and I've got appreciate uh, that. 23 years of experience in residential construction. Let me ask you, um, is this yeah. visible? 
the, the, only, the, the only part that's that. is visible is the, oh, is yeah. the, the 10 feet of the... Uh, There's a house on each side of you? Yes. Um, I have an apartment on the left and the uh, residence that's yeah. now three apartments on the right. Uh, when I'm, this, uh, the elevation that will be visible is also abutting a driveway. Uh, and this slide shows you, it's also included in your packet, uh, those lines indicate lines of sight from, from the, the street, right of way. From the right of way, yeah. Um, oh, okay. So just well, for the record, I, I'm sorry, if you could just say for the record what the picture is that's being passed around. So we're looking at a photograph of, what's this from? It's the backyard. Oh, your phone, sorry. <laughs> uh, the applicant's phone, which shows the um, back of the house and where the um, bedroom window hits the, what do you call right. this, freeze? Freeze, freeze band. And you calculated that the sea, that the, um, a nine by nine foot six elevation mm -hmm. with a gable would not interrupt this freeze? No, so at um, the current height, uh, they could do a three to 12 gable roof with the gable terminating at the rear of the structure uh, and still be under actually the um, the height of the shed roof. And do you argue that that is not true? That, 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 yeah, that's not the case. If we um, match the ceiling high, we would have to drop the, we would have to drop the ceiling high. At the, I calculated it at that, that height. In, in, in other words, um, it, it might be possible because that's, that's putting a rear wall of uh, nine feet, plate height nine one and a half, add another um, four and a half inches for uh, truss and sheathing. Then you would add three on twelves, fourteen feet wide, seven feet from the span. So you're talking about another twenty one inches, and that might just barely fit under there. Yeah. But, as, but as I said, the, the, the ceiling height in the existing home, the ceiling height now, on my inside, is 9'6". So, you know, as the homeowner walking from, into an addition where the ceiling drops down. I don't think anyone's asking you to do that. I, I, I'm yeah. asking if yeah. you all did two, did two different measurements. You, say, you said that the ceiling height could remain the same from where it is, and you're saying it, it can't. If, it, if you were to do a, a gable right. roof on them. So I'm yeah. not sure what to do with these conflicting pieces of information. Okay. The, the, the um, putting a gable roof on that house, and we would have to raise the wall high even further on. You would have to raise the what? The wall high. I thought you said you, it would be shorter if you... Depends on your slope. Right. What slope are you talking in, about? In, in other words, okay, um, looking, at, looking at this, that, that end wall was raised to 9 feet. It was originally in our original design, 8 feet. So we raised it up to 9 feet, that end wall, so we could accommodate that, that raise that window up. You got header height in that. Mm-hmm. So, but now if we were to change that to a, a gable roof, again, a hip roof's not going to make any difference. The roof is going to terminate in the house anyway. But wouldn't it terminate lower? Okay. No, it would. Then the uh, freeze line, it would terminate it several would. feet below. I think, so, one of the, I guess. With a hip roof, no? Am I? <coughs> um, <coughs> the property line is, what, 30 feet from the street? Um, the. The year. I guess I'm I'm just struggling when I look at it on the, the aerials and I probably could have done a little more service by standing there, but it seems like it's really far back. Yes. Um, and what you would see was very limited. It if you stand on the sidewalk, there's a sidewalk that's about 10 feet from the street. Um, so it's fairly visible um, from the from the sidewalk. Yeah. Currently, there's a lattice work with the Confederate jasmine there, which we intend to put there right. even later. Right. You know, we will have to move it so that the contractors can get in there. Sure. But 
we want to put it back because we enjoy it right there. Right. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to try one more time with this roof business. We, we, we can't have the gable coming out this way that would run water all the way into our house. So the gable would have to be turned, okay, right? And that means the ridge of the roof is going to run into the house. I don't think we're, well, I think we're not getting anywhere with that. Okay. For me, I think the bigger concern is um, if, depending on the visibility, if we, I think we've tried to work through this maybe with some in the past, but it's typically been a challenge on corner lots where you're guaranteed to see it. Yeah. Um, but there's other criteria on here, and if we're going to get into this kind of detail on every one, are, are you objecting to every one of these, or? The, the, um, Do you know what the four are? I, I believe so. Run, okay. Run by me. Sure. So um, go ahead. Well, the shingles, um, using a shingle roof to match the, probably asphalt, is the, was, if that's what you have instead of the... The, 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 the shape of the roof determines everything. If we can't use a shed roof... Well, you can use shingles on a 312, so... Right. Yeah, we can use shingles on a 312. Okay. But then the other one was um, to have a minimum of one matching window. Yeah. Um, and size and paint configuration of the double hung windows on the existing structure to be used in place of a proposed... Okay. Have um, pardon me. Pardon me. I, I don't believe that we've gotten your name for the record. Or have you been sworn in, oh, Patricia Seeley? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he did, but he did. Right. Um, my thought on that is, and Pat and I were talking about the other night, is we really don't want the long windows. I don't know what y'all call them, but I call them long windows, tall windows, because of the traffic of the driveway right beside us. It's a rental. They go in and out all the time. But my thought would be that to flank on either side of the dining room, what is really the dining room, but we do it as a den, to have the addition to have the two small windows that are really in our front room, which those are not tall windows. Those are short windows. So my thought would be if you have to give up the light, which that little row of long windows, horizontal, give us light in that room. But if you were to take the, the windows that are on either side of the chimney and put them on the addition, then you would have a mirror image. You'd have symmetry. The two small windows at the front of the house, two mm -hmm. small windows at the back of the house. And we wouldn't have to put in the tall windows. I'm not following you. Did you want to say that again? So she so wants to the use the with the similar, you mean the same windows. size and style, these right. two, put them here. Right. Because then. Then, then including that middle this one, room. I was I was wondering why you didn't use this size here. Yeah, me right. too. Um, <laughs> that's that's a narrow hallway. Right. The interior the interior trim in that house is one by five with base cap on it. So I'm going to duplicate the interior trim. My intention, if we can do this addition, is to duplicate the, the trim. I mean, I want this house to look like it's. Part of the house. So we, so we, we do too. I think you gotta understand too. We're tasked with yeah. a host of guidelines that yeah. right. you may help make. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Um, well, and the other thing is, I keep saying, and I've said it, to Megan, you really can't see it. I mean, if someone is standing literally on the corner across the street, yes, they can see it. Most people aren't going to even notice it. We are not on the corner lot where the next one in. I just don't think that people will see it. I mean, it's way back in the back of our house. If we put the lattice work back up, you're even going to see less of it. So, you know. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but so to support my Valentine, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, particularly wouldn't have any objection to duplicating the one of the fixed windows on the <coughs> side of the chimney in place of the, uh, the, the long one. Where are the tops different, or is that just a comment? On the first proposal, the tops of the Oh, but they're, they're now all the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. We did change it. Do you what? have a rear out elevation, uh, like an entire rear elevation for us oh. to look at? No. I thought you did So, that. we got a, of the, well, you I mean, you can see the rear elevation of the addition, but not I mean, the no. entire house. Would, would keeping two windows that flank the chimney and replication there be conforming? Yes. So, we're really, if, 
we're in agreement on three and four. You would you would be fine taking the two windows and replicating that that are by the chimney, yes. as opposed to going to full height. Right. And we're finding that would be okay. So we're really down to this roof pitch yeah. and direction. Yeah. Sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the material. And the material. If. if okay. It's still relevant. If it's shedded and going to the rear, you'll never see the roof that's on it. Right. It'd only be if it was right, cable right, right. that the shingles would. Sure. You wouldn't be able to see it. And then the rental house sticks out significantly past on the corner, even if you're looking backwards. Mm -hmm. um. Any more questions? Do you ha um, so you said that there are several examples in the neighborhood. Normally, we would have images of the uh, examples um, the of the sh of a, a, me a standing seam um, yeah, metal roof on an addition in the neighborhood. And there are some on some porches um, around the around the immediate neighborhood. Um, Do you know if those were installed before or after you all did the guidelines by any chance? I don't know. That. Okay. But, um, what we have next door to us is an addition that's a shared roof design, and that that's um, and that that. That that addition was probably put on 60 years ago. I mean, it was, it's been on there a long time. Mm -hmm. The house, um, the house that I immediate left, Virginia, is an apartment house. It always has been. Um, even in 1925, when my mother lived there, um, and the house to our, I'm sorry, Virginia's on our left. The house to our right was a single-family residential that's been cut up three, four apartments. Apartments. What's behind you? Like, here's uh, your house. Backyard. Yeah. No, is there a, is there <laughs> a backyard? We, There's we, a backyard behind we, us. We, we have, we have um, one of the smallest lots in Shandon. You know, they're all narrow. Most of them are long. Sit where we are on the corner. The house is from Woodrow. There's from Woodrow on the other side of uh, the apartment house. Their backyard cuts across. So we end up with half a yard. Half a yard. See, oh, I don't think you'll see it. Yeah. Because the street's all the way. Yeah. You're not on the corner. He's not no, on the corner. We're not on the corner. Uh -huh. Do you have that slide? So that, that, this slide stops at the sidewalk. That's where the sidewalk is located. Yeah. So the house to the left, if you go up a little bit, that's the Virginia. Mm -hmm. and then if you move above that, on that, that was Mr. Clark's house. And, and his backyard there. comes all the way to our the right side of our property. Mm -hmm. See right there. Mm -hmm. So literally in our backyard is the neighbor's backyard. So this is the house that you said has a shed roof right. on the addition in the back? Right. On the back of that house, of course, you can't see it from that view. You can't see it. Or you cannot see it, right? <laughs> right, right. right. From that, from the way you look. If you were directly over the house looking down, you would see it. Like a drone, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, you said, uh, just to confirm, you said this isn't contributing property in the district? It's non contributing to the National Register District, but it is contributing to the local district. Okay. Is it non contributing because of these two windows in the phone? In the National Register District, yes, but again, it's contributing in the yeah. local district. Okay. I don't think you can see it. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, I know you can see it a little bit, but not enough to be. I want to work with you here. Yeah. I really <laughs> I'm really so I'm fair, I am concerned that if we do this and the metal goes on back there, it's going to look kind of like what got presented earlier. Except um, that you're not, no one's yeah. going to be able to see it unless they're. Would you be opposed to shingles? Well, well uh, on the height. We, we, we can't we can't put shingles on. You can't with three twelve. Three twelve. You can't on three twelve. You can okay. if it's over three and twelve. I mean three and a half. One and a half. Yeah. <clears throat> three and a half over twelve. Okay. Okay. But prefer it to be five. The, the more slope, the better. Right. Right. 
uh, as I said, I've in residential construction for 23 years. Right. We heard that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Have you considered all these if, factors? If, mm -hmm. if, um, and just as a note, the 312 was calculated based on a gable roof, not on a shed roof. Um, so that's something to take into consideration okay. as well. It looks like you have some room. If you had to pick it up, you could still stay below that. Um, band. Um, I, um, I feel like I'm not explaining myself well, but um, if I could borrow a pen, please. Okay, so um, so I'm just going to Uh, I've calculated this in great detail, and that roof would... We're, we're talking about a shed roof. Okay. But I couldn't get a shed roof in either at that, with that end wall high. Okay. So you couldn't just pull the shed roof up a foot or uh, six that, inches or so. That, yeah. that, that design that we have is the um, is um, so you're one point five on twelve. No, that, that should be. I'm I'm following you now. That that shed okay. roof terminates immediately under the freeze band on the house. Oh, it doesn't it's, appear it's, that. This drawing is one point five on twelve, not three. So right. if you took it to three, you probably would be over the band. Right. I, th yeah. I thought it was three. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, as, as far as the visibility of the roof, thank you, there, there would be no visibility of the roof from the street at all. Um, the, uh, my intention is to run, uh, have a 16-inch overhang, run, run a one by six, and uh, on that overhang with exposed mm -hmm. uh, barge uh, rafters. That's a skeleton eave on that house. Um, okay. Duplicating the, uh, what, what is visible uh, uh, to match the existing structure. Definitely appreciate your uh, attention to detail. Yeah. We've, we've thought about this for a long time. It's, it's evident. Okay, <clears throat> any more questions? Do we have anybody? Thank you. thank you. Do we have anything, anybody back there to support or opposition? Do I hear anybody? Okay. If someone on, on the board would like to make a motion. Okay, I'll try. <coughs> okay, I make a motion for approval based on the evidence presented. Ugh. All right. I guess, is, would it be approval with conditions since we're making some modifications of the bullet? So I'm making a motion for approval with conditions based on the evidence presented. And I can't see the section number here. Four. Ah, thank you. And section four of the Old Shandon Lower Waiver the protection area A guidelines. I move that the Design Development Review Commission approve a certificate of design approval. I don't know how to describe the project for this project. Addition. For the addition, thank you very much. Proposed at 2707 Preston Street with the following conditions. Um, that two smaller windows replace that are that look similar to the chimney windows. the chimney dimensions. windows the dimensions um, of, on the existing house to replace the horizontal and smaller window um, that the tops of the windows of the addition align with the tops of the windows on the existing structure. 
and that all other details are deferred to staff. I'll second. You second? Yes. Can we have a vote? Mr. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Fuller Welk? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Wynn? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. The motion passes. Y'all understand what you got? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See where I am. Oh, we're not. That's it. That's it. All. That's all the cases we have, right? Those are all the cases, and just so you know. Um, there will be no executive session today, okay. right? So we've concluded the business, other business we don't actually have any. Do we need to vote on that? Nope. Just adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. I don't have a gavel, but. Yep. Adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Bye. 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 Bye.